and some of the pictures are kind of dark, so we'll just work with the best we can. What I'm going to talk about today is kind of a, a weird subject a lot of people don't want to talk about, but it's sensitive target engagement. Uh, what that means is things that, and it's a military term, and it's things that have high value to some people and kind of have a fear factor as well. Um, and one of the things we'll talk about is um, our kids, for instance. You know, how many of us have kids? How many of you guys have kids? Anybody? All right, cool. Well, what I'm thinking is... When you look at this picture, you don't think that, hey, the, you know, when I send the kids off to school or when I drop them off at daycare, it's the last time I'm going to see them, right? We don't ever want to think about stuff like that. So, you know, that's, that's what this picture is right here. And um, what I want to go into is, is kind of talking about some of the things that, again, it didn't, yeah, it didn't, it didn't play. But anyways, what we had right here was uh, a sound clip from one of the school shootings. Uh, it was one of the teachers. And she was on the phone, and you could hear a lot of, you know, ruckus and what have you in the background. And she's telling her kids to get down, get down, get over here, screaming at them um, for whatever reason it didn't work. Uh, but a little bit about me, what I'm qualified to be talking about this stuff. Uh, I started out working uh, Texas Department of Corrections. I did tactical work there, riot control, uh, these kind of things. I went into the Army, did intelligence there. I was an interrogator uh, there. And then when I came back, I went into law enforcement. So. Really, that's all you can do with an interrogator background. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. Uh, one of the things that I learned there was a defensive active shooter. Now what that means is active shooters are scenarios like to school here. Someone walks in, they just start gunning people down. That's what it's called. It's, it's a high speed, not someone goes into Walmart and is holding someone hostage. This is they're walking through the hallway shooting any person they see. Um, my class was the first one to go through active shooter training because it was something that the FBI just came up with. And again, that's a uh, Department of Homeland Security definition, roughly just saying, hey, if someone comes in, just start shooting random people. So, you know, we address that. Yes, the haircuts are mandatory. Those are all awesome. If any of you want one of those, we can do that. Um, you know, and one of the things about that is, is it's so scary. And the first time that it really happened, in recent times was back in uh, April April 20th of 99. That was when Columbine happened. Yeah, I don't know where you guys were at that time. Some of y'all were probably little kids. We were in high school uh, when that happened, so that kind of hit us hard. Um, and what we dealt with at that time was that we had kids that, you know, there was just something going on with them. And they decided that what they were going to do was they were going to go in and just destroy everyone's sense of security. That's what we value. So they went in. 20 minutes, 12 students, one teacher, and wounded 21 others. The difference between what we face uh, with this generation and the previous generations is that the enemy that we're fighting doesn't want to stand up and say, hey, here I am, here's the uniform I'm in, who, here's who I represent. They dress like all of us. There's no difference. They're hard to see, okay? So this is what we're facing right now. It's kind of scary. What we're seeing here is this one, these two photos right here, this is a Hamas uh, rally, which is a terrorist group. That's a whole different conversation. But what we're looking at is the way we value our children versus the way other societies value their children. Now that's a broad statement. This no way says that everyone of whatever faith is this way. These are radicalists just like you see in any other issue, you know. But that's what we're looking at. We try and shel you know, shelter our kids from bad things and then you see stuff like this. You know, this is difficult for us to deal with as a society. We don't understand it. Um, one of the things, or one of the primary motivators of these types of shootings, these types of issues, is that they don't have the numbers that we have. We've got what's, uh, what's known, our force multipliers are things like tanks, jet fighters, overwhelming numbers. They don't have that. What they have is the fear that they can instill in whoever is paying any attention at all. So that's what we're looking at. And uh, target area is the general public. Anywhere that you can get mass groups of people together. And what they're looking for is the, um, it's gonna be your kind of the crowd effect of when one person starts panicking, everyone else is gonna do the same thing. You know, when one person starts freaking out, it's over. So that's what they're going for here. That's why you see this type of stuff happen in big empty, or big, you know, full buildings because they don't have to have large numbers to pull it off. They're just going by scaring everyone. And this is, uh, 
And this is something I wanted to throw in here because going back to kind of what we were dealing with with our generations and others is, you know, Vietnam was really the first time people were fighting groups that didn't want to fight them back. They wanted to wait until they were settled in, dealing with them that way. That's why I threw this on there. Uh, just a little something to kind of remind you guys. Uh, one of the issues that we see is that when we're dealing with these types of shootings and what have you, especially on military installations, and I'll get to that here in just a second, is that there is not, there's regulations in place by UCMJ, which is, or uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know this one really well and I decided to drop the ball on it. Hold on just a second. It's a Uniform Code of Military Justice, uh, Reg 300-1. What that says is military personnel on military installations are not to be armed at any time unless it's part of their duty. So the problem with this is you've got these guys who are trained with firearms and you go to Walmart and you see these hillbillies with pistols in their pockets. You know, that's the real deal though, is that at a Walmart you'll see more guns than you will see on your average military installation, which is a reason that these guys are targeted. They know that they're not going to have firearms. They know that they're not going to be able to shoot back and fish in a barrel at that time. So that's, you know, one of the main concerns there. That was one of the deals that I wanted to address. Um, and in closing, just kind of let you guys know, just be aware of your surroundings. Um, most people are, are busy with our phones. You know, we're playing with our phones. We're doing this, that, or the other. We don't pay attention to who's beside us, who's behind us. There's crazies out there, and we just need to kind of keep an eye on them. Um, do things like when you're at your kid's school, make sure the doors that are supposed to be locked are locked. Make sure there's not people hanging out that shouldn't be hanging out there, you know. Um, everybody can make a difference. You know, it's not a good idea to intervene in most of these situations unless you've got any kind of training, but do everything you can. If you see something, report it. If there's any issues like that, let somebody know, somebody that actually can deal with it. Um, that is, like I said, it's a subject that no one really wants to talk about, but it's, it's a hot topic right now. And because of my background, that's pretty much all I know. So I don't know all these fun things that you guys deal with on a daily basis. It's this kind of stuff. So that's all I've got. And I will close it down and let you guys have it.